No, right now I'm driving. I'm driving and without any without any direction, I'm just wasting gas and gas is expensive. So I'm driving right now, but I have a destination and I have a route that I'm taking to get me to the end goal, right? And in life, your energy is your gas and your vehicle is your legs and your energy, you're, t you're taking yourself places, right? Just make sure that those destinations you're going to are, are worthy of all that gasoline that you're, you're spending, right? And uh, I really want to stress to you that bad people, <laughs> you have to understand that they're there's a lot of people that they have demons inside of them. This is for somebody out there. And, and they're, they're trying to change these people. And I want you to know that the demon in that person that you're trying to change, the demon in that person looks at you as you're a mark. You're a target, you're a mark. They're laughing. The demon is laughing in the person saying, I'm gonna get this person. I'm gonna take them down. So if you're a good person, if you're a good person, you're trying to help, like so many women try to change men, etc. I just want you to know, be careful, because the only one that can change anybody is Jesus Christ. We as human beings cannot change anybody. We can give advice, we can point the way, hey, hey take this route, we can do all those things, right? But you can't go inside the person and take, you can't make them want to change. And the desire needs to be there in order for them to change. It's really true. If you don't have the desire to change, not even God can change you. You have to have the desire because even if God does change you, you'll go right back to your old ways because you, you didn't want to change. So the desire to change needs to be there. If you have the desire to change and you just find yourself in a place where it's just really difficult and hard, what I want you to do is motivate yourself in the small things. Because what I have learned about life is that the small things, the details of life, the little things that people bypass on a daily basis. They achieve a lot of little things, but they they don't give themselves the, the credit, the pat on the back that they deserve. They only give themselves a pat on the back if they achieve the, un the, the unachievable, the, the great mountain, right? Mount Everest. Then they'll pat, pat themselves on the back, except that Mount Everest not a lot of people get to do that, right? But let me tell you, okay, something that's very true. The people that climb up Mount Everest, they climbed a lot of smaller mountains before they ever got to that mountain. And what I mean by that is that the little details of life, they climb those things. And then they climb those things so consistently, thousands of times, they got really good, they got muscles. And remember, I'm not talking physically climbing a mountain, right? I'm talking about your mountains are your problems. Your mountains are your obstacles. Your mountains are your challenges in life. And so we all have them. Each and every human being on the face of the planet has challenges and obstacles, right? And what I have assessed is that a life that is maintained in order, structured, and disciplined is a life that you as the individual look at your obstacles when it's in order and when it's um, organized. Say, say you have a dirty room, say you have uh, clothes everywhere and shoes, you can never find what you're looking for. And so when you have obstacles and you're thinking like, I have to overcome this thing, it's like a school or education, having your, your life in terms of like the setting of where you live and your mindset and 
waking up at any which hour and going to sleep at any which and not having that discipline or that structure I, will, I want you to know that all of that plays a role in you overcoming your um, your obstacle because it, it benefits you if you have things in order you, you, you think more clearly and um, basically you're more organized internally as a result of being organized externally you know what I mean? For example, if you have a lot of things to do, isn't it better to write them down so that you can check off one by one? You know? We've all been the type of person that keeps it all in our head and we miss we miss that grocery item that they told us to get. But, you know, we got four other ones, but we missed that fifth one, didn't we? We forgot. And it, it just plays... It's an example of being organized and just just doing that 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 little thing that helps you get your your life on track so that you could achieve so give yourself the edge is what i'm trying to say sharpen your sword so to speak you know the bible talks about a dull axe you know it takes skill to take down a tree uh so you could uh say say you know you have an axe i forgot who was who 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 was it that said I think it was Abraham Lincoln I'm not sure I think it was uh, Abraham Lincoln but somebody said that if they had 10 minutes to chop down a tree they would take 8 of those minutes sharpening the axe now think about that for a second think about that because that's worth worthy of thinking about because 8 of those minutes he would think he was he was planning on how he was going to chop down the tree effectively strategizing i'm going to whack it here while he was sharpening it he was looking at the tree sizing it up i'm going to whack it there i'm going to whack it here on the each side boom 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 and taking less time to do it less energy to do it you know but strategizing and doing what what, what it took to take it down with skill right i'm telling you no different I'm just telling you, when you have an obstacle, when you have challenges, strategize. Take a step back instead of just diving in and going in it with chaos and just a lot of uh, mess, you know. Get a clear view. Get a clear understanding. And sometimes you got to clean up for that to happen so that you'll find things that you that you didn't know you, you had and you, things that you thought you lost, you'll find them and... All I'm trying to say is, is that that's how your mind is on the inside. Because your outsides are a direct correlation of what your insides look like. If you, if you look at your outsides, you can see what your insides look like. So change the inside, right? Change the way you go about stuff and you'll get different results. Insanity. Is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. That's the definition of insanity. So let's change it up. Let's let's change your perspective on how you're looking at your goals. At your, change your perspective of how you're attacking your challenges. Change your your view. Right. I'm gonna share with you something that. I wasn't going to share with you, but I will do anything to help somebody, right? Even if it makes me uh, vulnerable. And I'm gonna share with you this. So, basically, I'm a serious person. I'm one of those types of people that I grew up very serious. When I was young, uh, my elders, people that I grew up with you know everybody was very serious you know remember I grew up on the streets so for me it was just like tough guy attitude and all that I got saved but that 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 look and all that stick to it. it's been this way my whole life I don't know how to like do the whole like ha 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 he 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 thing and I've been judged a lot as a result of that, right? 
I'm a happy guy. I sincerely, I'm a happy guy, for real. But this is me. <laughs> and I get it. Like, I don't look it, but I am it in my heart where it counts. So I bring this up because I'm learning. I have challenges. I have obstacles myself. And I'm strategizing how I can smile more, right? Because for me, it's, it's not, it doesn't go with who I am. Even though I am a happy guy, just I don't. So I have to learn how to do it, right? To accommodate other people that might think I'm too serious or this or that. So, and, and also for myself. But I bring that up and making myself vulnerable, so to speak, so that I can show you that we all have our own little dilemmas, right? And some are more serious than others, you know. I, I, I came from a place of overcoming addictions and, and violence and, and overcoming all kinds of different addictions. It wasn't just those two. A lot of different addictions. And I don't take any credit for it, guys. I give all the glory to Jesus Christ. He transformed my life. And uh, I made this channel on the platform of how powerful God is and how he can transform anybody's life that gives him their life and over a period of time and process and all that God starts to transform a life if you follow the system so to speak the system is what I'm giving you right now the tips and the, it's almost like if you don't know any better you're not gonna change but when they told me when I first got saved they, they told me you gotta get rid of your music, you gotta rid of, get rid of pornography, you gotta get rid of bad um, things that you watch on TV, you know, killings and all this kind of stuff. It's not beneficial to your spiritual walk. It's, 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 it's a stumbling block. It's, it's gonna delay your process, right? It's, it's, it's um, carnality, it's the things that the devil works with. So you don't wanna give the devil a loophole. You don't wanna give him anything to work with. So for that reason, you don't watch it, right? And so like, you, you try not to involve yourself with the things that are gonna hold you back from God's kingdom, right? And so God's kingdom represents peace and love and, and light and gentleness and all this kind of stuff. And then you, you're like involved with like, you know, watching and listening and doing the opposite, you know? It's not gonna condemn you, it's not, I, don't, I don't believe it will, but it's just not beneficial to your spiritual walk with God. And so if you want to feed your spiritual walk with God, as, as, as I do, because the more you grow, the more peace and the more blessings you get, and, and the more involved you become with the things of Jesus, I mean, quite frankly, it's a blessing in and of itself just to know Him, to hear His voice, and to have His presence, and, 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 and to be used by Him. So you have to follow the system of how He does things, not how you do things, right? So His system is different than our system so we got to change we got to we got to walk away from the things that we, we you know and so I remember when God would tell me you know do your bed in the morning and I said this is new you know I don't I don't do my bed in the morning I know people that do that but I don't do that and then he was he was introducing me to something different but I knew it was beneficial and sure enough like you make a habit out of anything. And I just tell you, like, life is, I don't want to paint a perfect picture for you. Sometimes, sometimes the people, uh, I, 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 want, I want to expose something, I want to pop an illusion in your head. And, um, and it's, the illusion is this, that sometimes you'll be listening to somebody, like, are you listening to me now? And they'll be talking about their own, their own life and this or that. And the picture that they're painting makes themselves out to be almost like non-human. And what I mean by non-human is like they're perfect. Everything in their life is, is glorious and this and that. And I just want to pop that in. There ain't nobody perfect out there. And people mess up. They make mistakes. They stumble. They get back up. They get roughed up. They... they they make decisions they wish that they hadn't 
all that's going on in everybody's life on a daily basis. I don't care you're talking about the president or whoever. It doesn't matter who they are, the Pope. It doesn't matter. Everybody deals with, um, you know, those regrets that they do. Like, they, they wish that they didn't do and stuff like that. And they're overcoming their own demons and this and that. So, this illusion popped, right? But I'm taking little illustrations of how, you know, God puts us through a process and we do get refined through the process. We get refined and over a period of time, you become a better person each and every day through habits. Because whatever you do for 21 days, back to back to back to back, yeah, like it starts to become part of your daily rituals. And it's just, it's just awkward when you don't do it. That's when you know it's a habit, when it feels off. I have a habit of going to the gym every day. I can't, I go through withdrawals if I don't go to the gym. Uh, like, my anxiety goes up the roof and this and that. Now, people have made habits out of drugs and alcohol or sex or this or that, that they go through withdrawals if they don't do those things. At that particular point in time, that's what I want to do is I want to point to Jesus Christ. I want to say that what you're going through is spiritual and physical. The symptoms of the physical are there, but the spiritual is what like drives you to do it tenfold. Like with all this like tenacity and it's like all this energy. I want to go, I want to go. And like all this like, I have to do it. You know, that is spiritual. Okay. And so the, the, the urge might be there from the physical, but the, the driving force is often spiritual. So you need Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the only one, okay? Speaking of all the gods and all this and all that, Jesus Christ is the only one who can save your soul from damnation, from hell, from condemnation, from darkness, from evil. He's the only one that can deliver you from demons because demons own every other religion. Demons own every other platform. They created every other religion to get you to be distracted by other things. So you have to understand that it's, there's a reason, there's hints and clues for you to see. In Hollywood, as an example, most people can most people will attest to there being a lot of pedophiles in Hollywood. There being a lot of sat satanic uh, things going on in Hollywood. You see it in the movies. Every mo every movie has to do with like blaspheming God's name, you know. And um, and it just it's just not it's pollution to the eyes, right? But it's really true that no other name is blasphemed. But Jesus is Christ name is they don't say Allah damn it they don't say uh, Buddha damn it they don't they, they don't say um, they don't blaspheme any other religion but Jesus Christ is his name is blaspheme and so there is a small little hint a clue why him why him right? why is the spotlight on him it's because the devil hates him because he's the one that took him down. He's the one that defeated him. He's the one that, you know, outsmarted him. Because the devil didn't kill him. He took himself to the cross. And he sacrificed himself to save us. And in that, in that chess game, so to speak, he outsmarted him. The devil didn't know what was taking place. Had the devil kn known that Jesus Christ was sacrificing himself on the cross the devil would have protected and defended Jesus at all costs because he didn't he wouldn't want him to die because he, he under, now he understands that he took our place and he gave us his place so it makes Jesus Christ the savior of the world and so right now what the devil does is he blinds the eyes of the unbeliever to get them not to listen, to get them not to 
And so that's why people are antsy while watching a video like this. They have something inside of them that's antsy. It wants to go to another video. Doesn't want to pay attention to this. Has a lot of distractions going on in the background. That you're trying to listen, but there's there's all kinds of racket in the background. And, and, and there's no coincidence behind all of that. It's just to take away from, from you hearing the message. Because the Bible says that hearing, that faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of God. And so... When you hear the things of God, you you will be um, distracted, and, and, and it will be an obstacle course for you to lean in and accept and receive it. Because the devil does not want people to get the truth, to know the truth, and because when they do get the truth and know the truth, it, the truth itself will set them free. And when they're set free, then they set other people free. And that's precisely what I'm doing here. I used to be super hostage. I used to be held hostage by the devil. You know, once upon a time. And I was set free. Because the truth opened my eyes. To the fact that that gangster thug life that I was living. It was a lie the whole time. And, I, and my eyes. And I was set free by the truth. Right? I, 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 I got to know Jesus Christ. He set me free. So. I'm going to. Um. You know, I'm going to go ahead and end the video there, but I hope that these videos are beneficial to you, that they nourish your soul and that they help you, and that they're beneficial to you, to setting you free and to helping you walk out your individual life out in the light so that you can be secure and safe, right? So I'm out to save lives, and um, I just want you to understand that prayers work. So keep praying, because he's listening. Jesus Christ is working on your case, and uh, keep the faith, all right? Don't believe the devil. The devil's a liar. God bless you. I love you.